that's a huge story on Friday that mm. I don't think anybody expected coming to sack Sean Dyche at this stage of the season. Were you just as surprised as everyone else? I mean, I, I, you can only just say that it obviously wasn't planned. Yeah. I mean, how often do you see managers get sacked <laughs> on a Friday? <laughs> it, it, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. So what's gone on, I'm not too sure. It's a huge loss because what he's done for Burnley Football Club is, is incredible, yeah. if I'm honest. And I think that the supporters and the way the supporters reacted would indicate to you that they, they feel the same. Closing in on 10 years as the manager, kept them in the Premier League for six consecutive seasons mm. with very little budget, as we've spoken about I every think, single season. What's the budget? 20? Was it 20 million it or something? In and around that it's mark. Just, and yeah. It's a miracle. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's incredible. It's so how they'll react, big game, huge game against yeah. West Ham at home tomorrow. I mean, what, what a time to, to lose the manager. I know. Well, speaking of the manager, of course, they haven't replaced Sean Dyche yet. So the under-23s coach takes charge, and that is Mike Jackson. Here's what he has to say ahead of the big game on Sunday. I think he can be unbelievably proud of what he's achieved here. I think when you look at it, there's two promotions, a European qualification. But I think more than, more than anything else, he's, he's, uh, he's built... Not only built a club, but he's built a culture and an identity. That's really difficult to do in football sometimes. It takes time, but it takes someone knowing what they're doing and know what they want. I think uh, the job he's done, I think you only have to listen to the interviews yesterday from some of the managers, from his peers and what they said about him. And I think that says a lot about the guy himself. There's good people that have been with him. No one likes to see anyone lose the job. Uh, and there's good people, Steve Stoney and Wong, Billy all the staff around him and it, and it is sad but, but they should be remembered for what they've actually done for this club and I'm sure the fans think that as well I think they've had a great 10 years and I don't think it'll be long before the gaffer and his staff are back in another job well, as we said it's a really tough time for those Bernie players because many of them have only known Sean Dyche I know they obviously mm. would have been in around Mike but it's a big ask for anyone to come in and try and and, and save this team, is it not? Absolutely. I mean, I think he's spoken brilliantly there. Yeah. And, and, and how he's yeah. spoke about Sean Dyche is absolutely spot on. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the players will relate to him and I'm sure he won't move away from what Sean Dyche has been doing because it's ingrained in these players. You know, they're, they're so well drilled, they're so well organised. And whether or not they'll, they'll want to stay up this Premier League season for him, yeah. And I think make it about that kind of motivation because mm. the players would, would do a lot for Sean Dyche. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they've just got to try and get into that mindset because for me, Burnley still have a real chance. And I think, you know, t tomorrow's game is, is a huge one. Do you think they have a big chance to then send Everton down and, and secure safety themselves? It's, it's a difficult one because Everton, again, the result against United gave them a lot of confidence. And uh, but they mentioned there about the culture. That was so mm. important. So those players are in... In grind and it's, it's in their blood, it's in, the, it's in the spirit about fighting for Burnley. So um, I hope they stay up because I really like Sean Dyson. I've, I've watched him over the last few years and um, it's not been easy for him, but he kept kept the team and, and I listen to him, the way he speaks, he speaks with humility. And you can see in his team, the way they play and uh, they give everything, they're honest players. So um, I hope they do stay up. And I think the conversation around Sean Dyche and Burnley for a lot of the season has been, oh, Sean Dyche will keep them up because he has so much experience. Well, now he's not there. Let's have a look at the remaining fixtures, not just for Burnley, but for the other teams in that relegation picture. Again, we looked at the battle to step for fourth and to, to secure Champions League football. Is there a fixture list that you think is favourable, as in for Everton and Burnley? Because I guess those are the two that are looking to, to avoid the drop. Uh, my, you know, at first glance, I look at Everton's and think that's tough. <laughs> that's a tough group of games for Everton. So, you know, instead of looking at which one is a bit easier, that for me looks to be the hardest. Leicester, Liverpool, Chelsea, Watford, Brentford, Crystal Palace, Arsenal, last game of the season that, that could need something yeah. to finish. You, you don't know. And again, all those other little battles in the Premier League have an impact on the the bottom, the bottom will have an impact on the top because of what are you fighting for the last two or three games? Will that make a difference to your team's performance? So you know, I think it's, it's hugely interesting. But Everton, mate, you see, they've got, in, I looked at their players, they've got enough players, quality there as well that you think they should be producing at the end and, and keep them up. They should, but I mean, they're, they're, they're they've, not been, they've been in free fall. I think there's a yeah. lot of pressure there as well because yeah. there's a lot of expectation from home support. I think the home games have been, been difficult and yeah. uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting running.